Hello folks, and welcome to uh, the final, well what should be the final video in the Jedi Requirements series. So what we're going to do here is we are going to discuss exactly what it is that you need to become a Jedi. And as you can see on the screen, I have some things up here you need to look at. We'll go over each one independently but just take a brief moment and look at what's there so you are aware of what we're going to cover but this is the requirement for becoming a Jedi and we've illustrated how to do that through these video series. So the first step that you need to accomplish is you need to master one profession doesn't matter if it's a basic profession, an advanced pr profession, or anything else. Just as long as you have one profession mastered so that you get a badge for it. You can master pistolier, rifleman, bounty hunter. You can even master artisan or entertainer. And that meets the first requirement for the badge. So since you only need one... All you got to do is pick one profession and master it. Doesn't matter what it is, just one singular profession will get you qualified for the basic part of getting the badge. Other than that, there are some other requirements, but that's the first step is to master one profession. So now you've mastered your one profession and you're ready to move on to the next step. Hopefully you've picked a combat profession of some sort that might help you get through this next section. But if not, there is possible to go through this as any class and you can have somebody help you kill all the stuff that needs to be killed. You're just going to need a really good friend who doesn't mind, spend, mind spending hours with you killing stuff. Or several friends if you can spread it out amongst those. But you need five content badges. Now, we'll go over each of the different content badges, but you need a total of five of them. So I will make a list in the next slide to show you what five are eligible. And we've made videos for all of these that are in the game right now for your reference. But you will need to do five of the choices of what we have available at this time. So here's those five content badges I just referred to. Uh, well, actually, there's more than five in the list, but you need five of these in this list. I should be more specific. Specific. Um, you can do Jabba's theme park, Nim's theme park, the Rebel theme park, the Imperial theme park. There are two Warren badges that each count as one content piece. And as it is not in the game as I write this, there are nine total Corvette badges. Uh, for the Corellian Corvette. There are uh, Rebel, Neutral, and Imperial. Each faction has three badges. So regardless of what faction you are, you can get up to three. The problem is, is as I'm writing, as I'm doing this, um, it's not available or it's more difficult than you might need to be able to do. Um, the Corvette is pretty challenging. You can't solo it. And we're looking to do this more on our own. So this kind of is out of the bounds of of our, our little project as to what we did. They could put the Corvette in by the time you might be listening to this. And if that's the case, that's great. Because then you will be able to get those three badges if you're in a very active guild. But as of right now, your choices are Jabba's, Nims, Rebel, Imperial, and one of the two Warren badges. Um, or both the Warren badges. So I said this when I did them, but the way we did it was we did the Rebel theme park and then we did the Imperial theme park after we stopped being Rebel. That is not the recommended way to do this. You can do Jabba's, Nims, Rebel, and two Warren and be done. You can do Jabba, Nim. Imperial and two Warren, and you've got your five badges. That's all you need. You don't need to do the Rebel and the Imperial like I did. I did it simply for illustration so that you could see both sides of it. But that's all there was to that. So, 
That brings us to our next point, points of interest. So the next thing you need to do after you've got your one profession, your five content badges, is you need to look at your points of interest badges. Uh, we've done all the points of interest in videos, so they're all there for you for every planet, but there's only specific ones you actually need, starting with the Jedi point of interest badges. So we'll go into what those are, but I've done them all for you already and provided you with waypoints for all the badges that award or all the POIs that award badges in the game. So you should have no problem getting these done. I've taken you to every single one of them. If you're having trouble with one, you can look back at the video and see where I got it and you can align yourself geographically with where it is. And that should get you to one. So the first set of POI badges we're going to cover are the Jedi POI badges. The Jedi POI badges include uh, Ben Kenobi's hut on Tatooine, the Jedi Temple on Dantooine, and Exarchon's Temple on Yavin. Now we've done all three of these in the video, and we were able to do all three without fighting anything. So you can do these with no combat skill as long as you're a little careful. Uh, the Jedi Temple can get a little tricky. Um, Exar Kun's Temple is just a long drive. That's all it is. But once you go to all three of those spots, you have your three Jedi POI badges and you meet the qualifications. So there you go. The next thing we need to do is get two difficult POI badges. Here's where you have some choice. There are more than two difficult POI badges, but you only need to get two of them to qualify. So just pick two from the list, and the two that I would pick would be the Crate Skeleton and the Greater Sarlacc on Tatooine, because you can actually knock those out when you go to Ben Kenobi's house, because they're fairly close by. So not terribly far to go and very easy to get just make sure you watch the video so you can be aware of what happens to you when you visit the Sarlacc if you choose to get a different one then I've also covered all of those for you already in other videos but those are your options and they will be presented in the next slide but you do need to get two of these in order to get the badge so here is our five difficult POI badges. The Crate Skeleton on Tatooine, the Sarlacc on Tatooine, the Tuscan Pool on Tatooine, and the Crate Graveyard on Tatooine, as well as the Lesser Sarlacc on Dathomir. Uh, you can pick any two of those you want to do. I would probably do the Crate Skeleton and the Sarlacc. Um, but I've done them all, so whatever one you choose to do, that will be more than uh, illustrated in those videos on those specific planets. Just look through for my POI Hunter videos and you'll find them. I take you through, I post the waypoints I use, and then I show you in the video exactly where it popped for me, which it should, well, should be the same place it pops for you. So just check those out and you will be able to get these fairly easy. What's the next thing you need? Five easy POI badges. So what constitution constitutes an easy POI badge? Every other badge not mentioned before. So you can visit five points of interest that award badges anywhere you want other than the ones above and they will count as easy and you will be in good shape to move forward from there. So there is your definition of what an easy POI badge is. Like I said, we've done all, all of them in videos, so should be no problem. I posted waypoints for all of them. I've gone to all of them for you so you can see. Pick the ones you think are easiest or neatest or whatever you want to use for your selection method. And just go ahead and visit some points of interest. There's a lot of them on Naboo that you can get to without even leaving the city. So it is possible to do these on any character. 
and get a bunch of badges. So anyway, just go grab those five EG badges and you are set. Probably the biggest question that I hear people ask is what do I do next? I've got all the badges I need, I got all the POIs I need, I got everything and I don't know what to do from here. Now there are some things I'm going to cover very specifically in the next few slides so I don't want to go too much into detail on this slide because I've already defined those things but we're going to cover what you need to do once you've you've been there now once you've met the requirements if Jedi are on the server and as I'm recording this they are not you need to be patient uh, there was sometimes a one to three day delay on live to when you finished to when you actually started your process so if you're not seeing those and you are done with the requirements then you just need to be patient so the key thing about what you need to do next is be patient there are a number of slash commands in Star Wars Galaxies that do different things now currently on live this does not work because Jedi have not yet been implemented but there is a slash check command C-H-E-C-K that will tell you how far along you are in your quest to become a Jedi uh, when this becomes implemented if you start the process after it's been implemented you can type slash check and it will tell you how far along in the process you are based on certain text that it gives you back which I will define in a slide down the road so you'll understand what each level means and how far you have to go so the measure of how far along you are in becoming a Jedi it tells you how much of an inner glow you have with the force hence the glowy abbreviation that's commonly used by a mostly veteran players I don't think anybody playing new now is really familiar with that term so much um, probably think it's something derogatory but in the next slide I show you the six-step program to becoming from a basic nothing to having full control over the force so the last step says you have an inner glow so a lot of us veteran players just said you're glowy and that's where that comes from so as I said it's a six-step process to go from having no connection to the force to accomplishing the goals to become glowy at step one you get a message that says you feel no connection with the force which means you've made no progress whatsoever towards becoming a Jedi you would see this most usually on a new character that had mastered no classes had no professions and had seen no theme parks that means you have to go complete all of the requirements this is pretty much the only one of the two steps the first one and the last one are the only two steps that are actually a hundred percent accurate by knowing exactly what step you're on uh, there's no way of knowing the weight of how the formula computes what you finished but you should either have one or six and everything in between just means you have more work to do so don't get discouraged if you do more theme parks or more POIs and you still retain the same level that you had because I'm not sure and I don't think anybody's really sure except the guys that are working on it or people who have really dug into the code how it determines your level of glowiness but the second one you barely notice something different about yourself that's what you see when you've had some POIs, some maybe a theme park, and some things like that. 
Uh, the third one, you feel a faint sense of the force. You've made more progress is basically what it's saying. Uh, the next one, you feel the force surge within you. That's a four. That means you're getting much closer. And the next one is you have a strong sense of the force within you, but you're not quite there yet. And the last one says you feel an inner glow. The force is with you. Once that comes up, you are pretty much done with the first done with all the requirements you have met all the requirements now you are ready to enter the next step of the process so what do you do now now that you're glowy now you wait and you wait and you wait where should you wait probably outside of towns um, there's a lot of speculation as to how to make the next steps go faster but nobody's ever confirmed any of them so I'm not going to mention them if you go out in the wilderness and just do things stay away from NPC and player cities and just play the game the next steps will happen naturally and they should happen sometime probably in one to three days I'm guessing now this information is coming from what I saw on the live server and some of the things I saw on test uh, when I was on test it took maybe two hours before I got through the next steps um, on live I had friends who did not get them started for days because they paced it out so they didn't overwhelm the server so they could introduce people into it naturally now here's the key you need to be patient for this to work and you need to make it capable of working so you need to go out in the wilderness and walk around and you need to pay attention to what's going on around you so you don't miss the steps and as soon as you get your steps completed you kind of need to get on top of it if it's been a couple of days if you for some reason did not get your visit for three days you need to get up there as quick as possible and this is from implementation if it's later in the cycle then you, you can take as long as you want it really doesn't matter but if you want to get started you need to get started as soon as possible and I realize it's difficult because I'm telling you to wait but you just need to play the game and pay attention and when your turn comes that's when your turn comes and you'll be able to do the rest of the steps so the steps that I was talking about the first part if you're outside of player cities uh, an old man will run up to you and say that he needs to speak with you now you need to converse with him but you need to make sure because he will disappear if you do not pay attention so if you're going to be away from your computer for a while and you're out doing something outside of a player city you need to log out just so you don't have him visit while you're gone because he'll stay for a few minutes and if you don't catch him he'll run away and you may not see him for hours so he will give you a force crystal and it's your job to protect the force crystal and who are you protecting the force crystal from that's right the dreaded sith shadows so when the old man gives you the force crystal at some point you will be attacked by two sometimes four I think the most I've ever seen is four Sith so shadows. They're not hard to kill. Um, if you have no combat, they may be very hard for you to kill. So be aware if you don't have combat skill to. And while you're waiting out in the wilderness, because they will attack you in the wilderness, group up with a combaty friend who can protect you, and there you go. But you do need to kill them. If they kill you, you lose your crystal. And you have to wait for the old man to come back again. It's a long wait. 
and then you know what's going to happen? They're going to attack you again. This is the way you get through it. And once they attack you and you beat them, you get a waypoint data pad with a waypoint to an encampment out on Dathomir. I'm not going to give you the waypoint for it. There's no point. It's in the southeastern, I think. So if you can't, if you don't have the waypoint yourself already, you can't go there. It's uh, the city of Aurelia, and it is protected by a field of mist. So if you don't have the force crystal, you can't get through the mist. If you have the force crystal, you have the waypoint. So no point in me giving you a waypoint you already have so that's pretty simple there so you've got your old man visit you killed your sis shadows you got your waypoint for Aurelia good job congratulations you have done a good bit of work you really have but honestly the work hasn't even started yet I was going to summarize some of the things about Aurelia in this video, but I got to thinking about it and the video would be eight hours long. So I'm going to cover Aurelia and the trials as they happen on the server so then you can see how you work through them. But I will put up some points ahead of time as to things you need to be aware of for Aurelia as a tips and whatever as we get closer. Now keep in mind this video and all of the videos I'm putting up before Jedi even come out are based on information that I worked with on live or um, things that I noticed on test here. So take what I say here with a grain of salt but it's pretty solid grain of salt so you should be in good shape. At least it'll get you the requirements. Now the Aurelia part, that's a little different. I'm just going to summarize and say that Aurelia is four phases of three weeks each. And then the, you have 16 trials to go through before you even get your lightsaber. So starting down this path is going to be extremely lengthy. If you don't complete a phase and get your box, you are going to have to do it again when it recycles before you can get the trial. And then you have to kill Malachi, and it's a long story, we'll get there. But that is after actually becoming Jedi qualified, and that's the scope of this video. We will cover Aurelia in phases in other videos and Aurelia general information and then we'll do the trials and trial other information so you'll get more detail as that goes on but I did want to summarize everything that we've been doing for the last 50 whatever videos to take our character from a new character to somebody who can turn on Jedi day one when they put it in place and then we're going to start the long process of getting through Aurelia and getting through the trials before we're even a Jedi at that point so that's about probably 16 weeks we're an initiate in a Padawan and that's it so Hey, it's a start. You got to start somewhere, right? But that is an entirely different set of videos. But for now, let me say thank you for watching. I hope this information helps you. And if it you were interested in hearing more details about any of this or any details about Star Wars Galaxy Simulator in general, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of content on this and pretty much right now every day. Although I will probably run out of daily content soon. Uh, well, not soon. I'll run out of daily content sometime and we'll have to go a couple every couple days or whatnot. Anyway, subscribe to the channel. 
like the video if you enjoyed this particular video and drop your comments below to let me know any questions maybe something I missed but do keep in mind that this information was based on my experience going through on the live server as well as some of the experience here on test so even though it's 99.5 percent probable that this is exactly how it's going to happen they could spin it at the last minute and change their mind and make it totally different but I seriously doubt they're going to do that. So should be good with what I've told you here to get you to this point. And once you get here, hopefully we'll be able to move past it and go to the next step. So once again, if you have met these steps and you're ready to go, congratulations. Awesome work. You did a great job. It's a hard road to follow, a hard task, and you managed to accomplish it. Good for you. Now, Get ready for the actual work.